Welcome home. We are WNST, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. Baltimore positive. Happy post-4th of July. Happy homestand to those of you celebrating the Orioles this week. Lots and lots of discussions about America, about crab cakes on the uh, programming this week as well. Had a lot of friends uh, on. Uh, Wendy Bronfine was here this week. Had some old friends. Uh, Lisa Rosiniak from Goodwill talking about her XL Center um, and a conversation about light rail. All sorts of things in addition to our extended and excellent coverage of Orioles baseball on Friday. We'll be down just in time for the Yankees to get here. We'll be at Fadley's. All are brought to you by the Maryland Lottery. We'll have the Gold Rush 7s doublers to give away. Had a lucky batch thus far. It'll be, uh, be fun to give those away down at Fadley's. Luke Jones will be joining us on Friday. The Yankees are in town. Um, come on down. Watch the birds play. It's sold out on Saturday. Plenty of pinstripers will be in, I'm sure, this weekend. Our friends at Liberty Pure Solutions, keeping our water crystal clear and Jiffy Lube, driving us smartly and wisely home with uh, proper oil and proper fluids and proper everything going on. Jiffy Lube Multicare doing more than just oil changes these days. Lou Jones doing just uh, more than Ravens coverage these days, although uh, they're taking a nap. We hope to keep them out of jurisprudence for another three weeks until you can convene. But meantime, West Coast baseball, um, successful trip. Coming home against the lowly Cubs and the uh, suddenly lowly Yankees. And all those pitching problems go away. But they, we found a new grievance over the weekend. Uh, Luke, uh, <laughs> Oriole fans have to have grievances. Um, you know, whether it's we haven't won in 40 years or uh, we don't get enough love or no one loves us enough. Um, and I, I love that Billick used to always use this. And he didn't really believe it. They're out to screw us. They're out to get us. All of them are out to get us. And Harbaugh lives his life more that way. But Billick used to say it, uh, you know, 25 years ago. But as much as we think the Orioles are getting, you know, proper respect and love and they get talked about on Major League Baseball Network, when the rubber meets the road about how many good players we have and how many good players they have, the All-Star game feels like, um, you know, maybe there'll be a little chip on their shoulder this week. And I have a feeling two of these guys will still wind up in Texas next week once half these guys bail out. Um, even guys that didn't make it might be happy they didn't make it once you get to be a veteran player. But, you know, Santander, Westberg, uh, Kimbrell, Rodriguez, plenty of guys around the fringes that got screwed. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if they were screwed. I, I think. Let me be a homer. Come on. They say I don't love the team <laughs> enough. I, I, I'll say this, just in a general sense, and, and every market in Major League Baseball has fans complaining right now, I'll, except for maybe the absolute worst of the worst teams. But the term snub gets thrown out way too much at this point in time. There are certainly guys who had arguments. And I will say what I find ironic is. Kimbrel, who even as recently as a week, week and a half ago, when I would put out on Twitter or X or what, so whatever social media outlet you're uh, subscribing to and say he's coming in the game, there was still fan response of saying, oh, no, uh, you know, hold on. It's going to be a bumpy ride, all this. And yet Craig Kimbrel ended up, you know, and, and it's especially been over the last couple of weeks where guys like me were pointing out that just about all of his saves had been two or three run saves and hadn't done so great with one run leads and all that. Well, the last couple of weeks, he's really been on a roll. Uh, and it's really been since mid May that he righted himself and got himself back on track and has been excellent where he probably has the best argument. I, I think of all the arguments and we'll get to Jordan Westberg in a moment. Cause he's the other one that I, I feel more compelled to you know, feel for uh, in, in terms of not getting the nod. But Craig Kimbrell for Clay Holmes, I mean, if it were May 20th, there was no question. It was Clay Holmes, right, who I, I don't think gave up a run until the, the third week of May. You know, hadn't given up an earned run, whereas Craig Kimbrell had temporarily lost the closers role uh, with the Orioles. So, but since then, Craig Kimbrell has been outstanding and Clay Holmes has been an absolute mess uh, and, and has really been, you know, not the only reason for the Yankee struggles, but certainly uh, has blown some saves and, and really had his issues. So uh, I found that interesting, but I just, I, I just found some irony in the sense that even as recently as a couple of weeks ago, lots of Orioles fans had a ton of angst about Craig Kimbrell. And yet 
then two weeks later, they're complaining, why isn't he in the All-Star game? So, But you brought up the point, I, I think, with injury replacements, you know, whether we're talking about Kimbrell or anyone else, uh, I mean, we'll see how it plays out. Would not at all be shocked to see a couple more Orioles uh, get the nod, depending on, you know, who's banged up, you know, who decides to bow out, who gets hurt over the next week, all, all those different factors. But Kimbrell was the one. The other one to me, Jordan Westberg. I think what really ultimately hurt Westberg, one, we talk about this a lot. You know, we've talked about this a lot with the Pro Bowl over the years. If you're not voted in as a starter by the fans or you're not deemed a starter in in however the voting goes, veteran players tend to get a little more of a nod, a little more of a benefit of the doubt. They have a little more cachet. They have a little more name recognition. So I think Westberg had that working against him. And then the other factor is his versatility which is so valuable for the Orioles that tends to hurt you when it comes to a a, a all-star roster being filled out. You know, I I think when you look at the third baseman uh, in the American league, I I think it's tough to sit there. And and if you're viewing Jordan Westberg solely as a third baseman and saying, Oh my gosh, it is this great travesty. However, knowing that he's also played plenty of second base, and seeing someone like Marcus Simeon get the nod, who has been a great player for a long time, or a really good player for a long time, but is not having his best season by any stretch of the imagination. And that's probably the kindest way I could put it. You know, If you're going to talk about Westberg getting the nod over Marcus Simeon, if you're going to look at him as a second baseman, then yeah, I think Jordan Westberg had a heck of an argument. So yeah, I feel for him. And I, I wanted to see Westberg make it just because he's had such a good season. And, and I think you could really make an argument that he's been the Orioles' third best player, you know, and maybe fourth, you know, if we're going to throw Burns into the discussion in terms of talking about position players and pitchers. But, you know, for a large chunk of the first half, Gunnar Henderson's been the Orioles' MVP from day one. But for a large chunk of the second half, and maybe only until maybe the last month or so, you would make a strong argument that Westberg's been their second best position player. And I think Rutschman has probably overtaken him over the last month or so for that distinction based solely on 2024, but he's been right there. And he's been one of their three best position players all season long. And the the jump that he's made from last year to this year, we've talked about it over and over and over. I mean, uh, I I think we've kind of described him as your favorite player's favorite player. Uh, And as much as Gunner's the MVP and Adley's now a two-time all-star catcher, uh, I think Jordan Westbrook is very much, I I think it was, I, I can't remember if it was Kevin Brown or Jim Palmer on Sunday. Saturday or Sunday, I think they almost described Westberg as almost like their heartbeat, where he's just so steady for them. And he's you know, he's been good at third base. You know, his, his defense there has improved, to me, markedly from last year. Uh, you know, we, we know he's good at second base. Made a heck of a play. What was it, Friday night uh, in, the, in the final inning? Uh, you know, a tough short hop chopper. Made a great play and threw, threw out the, 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 the hitter to get a big out there and you know, what ended the game, I guess. But, uh, I mean, he's just, he's been so good. So, of all their other could be, maybe, you know, Westberg was the other guy. But, you know, to me, Kimbrell and, and him had the strongest arguments. Santander's had a lot of home runs. Don't get me wrong. I think there was an argument to be made, but I can't sit here and, and say with too much conviction that I thought he was a real snub. And you know me, Nestor. I've been a Grayson Rodriguez guy, you know, even going back to the second half of last year with just how well he pitched from the moment he was recalled from from Norfolk. But 11 wins, I get that. And he's been really, really good. But his couple bad starts lowered his ERA to a point where if you look at him among qualified starting pitchers, you know, it's not as though he's been a top five uh, ERA guy in the American League. So, you know, I don't have as much of a problem with that. I think I think there was a case to be made, but I can't sit here and say that that was, uh, you know, injustice for, for him not to make it. So, you know, I mean, I talked about this last week and I didn't expect him to make it, but, you know, I, I love seeing Ryan O'Hearn make the final vote uh, at, at DH. And obviously he came up short in that, but, you know, it was nice to see him get recognition there. So, you know, I mean, all these guys had a, you know, the fact that they were even even in the conversation speaks to how well the Orioles have played collectively. And I've seen some people say, well, you know, why is it that the Phillies have seven, the Dodgers have six, the Padres have five all-stars, 
Uh, the Guardians have five. You know, the Royals, who have certainly fallen off from from where they were with their hot start, you know, uh, the, the first couple months of the season. They even have four. But I'll also remind everyone that, you know, just viewing it strictly through the lens of how many All Stars you have. I've talked about this point a lot with the Pro Bowl uh, and Ravens fans being upset about certain guys not making the cut or not getting the nod or or whatever. But, you know, you kind of view it through the lens of, you know, you hypothetically could have the third best player in the league at all those positions. And that might not equate to an all-star berth for, for those guys, but that still equates to a heck of a baseball team. So, you know, yeah, I, I would have liked to seen the Orioles get a couple more. Uh, do I... It, do I think it's worth losing sleep over? No, but because to your point, I think there's a decent chance when it's all said and done that a couple, you know, a couple more guys could sneak onto the roster, uh, just knowing how much turnover there's been uh, in recent years with that. But just the fact that we're having, the, the fact that we're doing a whole segment talking about the All Star selections and guys that could make it, when for how many years you were talking about it through the through the lens of. Okay, who's going to be the Orioles' lone representative? And we've come a long, long, long way from having those discussions. So uh, nice to see the guys that got the recognition get it. Would have liked to have seen a couple more. But, you know, at at the end of the day, to your point, Craig Kimbrell getting some rest or some of these other guys getting some rest uh, and getting that four-day break where where you can truly get away might serve the Orioles well uh, in the big picture. Um, Gunnar Henderson and his greatness and where we are with, I mean, this time last year, talking about him being MVP candidate, first place, Yankees in town this week. Like if I'm writing a script for this and I would have told you two years ago, uh, coming out of the plague before the team had proven anything, Rutschman had just gotten here. This happens fast. And I would just say this. As a baseball fan and as a lifer baseball fan, you never feel like it's going to come. It happened kind of fast with Buck and the Duquette era. Like it, that 12 season, that 12, 13, 14 happened and it's over. Just like the Royals happened then and it's been over for them. And they're trying to find their way back for these organizations. These windows, these small windows where the Cubs had it. I mean, the Cubs had it and. Talk. They're in this week, right? Everything on the website will be Cubs this week, and they're here for the next three days. They're awful. They're the worst team in their own division right now. You mentioned Rizzo playing in New York and Schwarber. We saw him running around with the the Phillies. Like, these players, I don't know where Westberg, Rutschman, and Henderson are going to be seven years from now, and I don't know whether there's going to be three parades here or one, hopefully, or none, or whether Mr. Rubenstein's going to be a part of this and Cal will be on the float waving at a parade for the first time since 1983. Like, I can dream all of that. But it's a lot easier to dream that when you get to an all-star break and you say, baseball thinks we might have the best player. He's in the home run derby. And Rutschman would have been the guy we would have been talking about two years ago as MVP candidate, Maurer with power, Johnny Bench, everything Weeders was in, all of that stuff. The Henderson story and his shine, because he wasn't a one-one overall, right? Mm-hmm. He right, like all of that. Th- this this might be his All-Star game this week, right? I mean, it could be. I mean, he's been absolutely phenomenal. We've talked about this, and you know, it, it was pretty evident from the first couple weeks of April that this guy was shaping up to be a very serious MVP candidate. And let's face it, if Aaron Judge didn't exist. Gunnar Henderson would be running away with the MVP. I mean, that's how dynamic he has been. When you look at the fact that, you know, he's batting 293, he's got an on base percentage that's, you know, right around 385. I mean, slugging 600. You know, he has an OPS that's hovering right around 1,000. He's got 14 stolen bases. He has 27 home runs. I mean, there's nothing about Gunnar Henderson's game where you view it as a weakness. Are are there certain things he could do better? Uh, I mean, he, you know, he threw away a potential double play ball on Sunday, but he's, he's, he's a heck of a shortstop. You know, uh, I mean, he's, he's, uh, I think a year ago, there was a sentiment that he could be Corey Seager. And now I look at him as he's Corey Seager with speed. Uh, I mean, Corey Seager's not the fleetest of foot, whereas Gunner, you know, could steal end up stealing 30 bases probably won't but he'll steal 25 let's say it's crazy and he he can run he i mean uh, he's I mean, built like ripkin or a rod or one right. of those guys like 
It's amazing he can run. Even Barry Larkin, and I'm just thinking about, you know, guys that forget my cousin who was as big as me. I But th- the other part of him is I can't help, and this speaks to my age and to get off my lawn of my age, comparing him not to Ripken, not to even Aparicio or even Belanger, whose name got brought up by Palmer hitting the home run in Oakland this weekend, but but more like Machado and yeah. more like – Everything Machado brought from the minute his name alone, the macho Machado, all that Mr. Miami, all of that, uh, that, do I want to invest in this? Is this a leader? Is this my guy? You know, all, and I'll hear all the Latin hothead stuff too from the old world, but just the general is 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 he the guy you're going to build your franchise around? And these are the questions Rubenstein, Elias, you know, Greg Bader, they should all be asking this question on Henderson as to how to build around him. And I had a long conversation, a couple long conversations that I haven't had with you about Rubenstein. You and I will have a Rubenstein. I mean, again, they let you into the team. They don't let me in. I got questions for Mr. Rubenstein and the Whistler. But in a general sense... All of the evaluation they're making, and everybody is under review, including me. You're the only one not under review, and that's okay. You've proven yourself. Um, the money and all the money we're giving them and all the money they want for the new Masson and they're going to win the World Series or not, all that money is going to go to Gunnar Henderson if, it, if we figure <laughs> this out, right? Like, at the end of the day, he's going to get a half a billion dollars from this franchise, and you have to ask yourself, is this the guy? So far, so good, right? So far, so good. I mean, I'm not against it. Keeping in mind that Mr. Rubenstein doesn't have enough money, A, to complete the sale at $1.8 billion, but that's another story that nobody else is reporting but me. But then to, to, to sign him and for Mike Elias to call Scott Boris and say, Scott, I know you never sign ahead, but this is going to be the one. We're going to make it so incredible for you that you're going to sign a deal. here." Because the expectation for Rubenstein, when he goes into these rooms, and I don't want to be disrespectful to people who don't listen to the show, but morons, baseball morons, who just don't know anything, but just sign him. Hey, I want a beer. Let me on the deck. You know, sign him. Send the money. We got it. He, he's not signing. And I think that is going to be, you thought Lamar was tough. Wait till you see this one, right? And uh, uh, because this kid's this good, he's unsignable because of his agent. We, we're, we, we've, we've got an owner stipping the, sticking the dipstick, as a Jiffy Lube reference, into the oil tank to say, well, how much money are we going to generate here? Greg uh, and TJ, how many patches can we put on sleeves? Can we get naming rights for the stadium? Can we just buy the team outright and get rid of the Angelos people? Let's start with that. But these are all the big questions. And as I see Gunnar Henderson have Major League Baseball, Fox Television, ESPN blow up the balloon on his greatness and his pick any of those guys from the Cubs, right? Schwarber, Rizzo, just go through the names of those guys, seven, eight, or take Machado, Chris Davis, just throwing it out there. Cause he was a superstar. It would have been Brady Anderson in 96, right? So this is the week where we say, we got great players. We're in first place. We're going to beat the crap out of the Yankees. We're going to be in the all-star game. We're going to be all that. This is when the fans start saying, all right, generational player, maybe players, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe both of them. Gener- and, and, and maybe Grayson Rodriguez is Jim Palmer too. <laughs> and maybe Jordan Westberg's better than Rich Dower or Bobby Gritch. You know, <laughs> maybe he's, I don't even know what to compare him to. Maybe Scott Rowland. I don't know. I'm making that up, but, that's not a bad comparison. Scott Rowland's not a hall, a hall of Famer, by the way, but we can have that discussion later on. Sure. Um, I'm rambling, but th- this is Henderson's time to get paid, get money, blow up the balloon. They're not going to pay him. But I tell you what, I have a different vibe on him, and I haven't met the kid. And, and I met Machado twice in my life. I haven't met the kid. But on the outside, it feels like – and you're around. And even last year when Aaron Frazier kind of gave him a dirty – a dirty deal at second base. I'm like, do they like this kid? Is this kid bringing some, because 
they didn't like Machado. A lot of guys didn't like me. The, you know, the hot dogs, all that young guys coming up. I can't think that J.J. Hardy looked at Machado and said, dude, sit down. Stop quit starting fights. You know, just all that stuff that went on. Henderson feels like he's a cut above in this way. And this kid from Alabama that doesn't talk much. And Rutschman feels like he doesn't want to say much to anybody about much. They're, they're relative. They're, they're going to be under the radar guys. Yeah, I, I, I mean, one thing I'll, I'll push back on a little bit. I, I think Manny, I think Manny's teammates liked him, but I think there was very much a sense of, to, to borrow an expression from Manny Ramirez, there was a, a, an element of Manny being Manny, and, and uh, at times, you know, is he a not, leader? Is he a sure, least, sure, sure? Not but, is he Cal Ripken? I'm not trying to compare right. well, anybody it, see, to this Cal is what, or Brooks. You know, this is what's interesting though, because. If you if you and I had had this and we had this conversation back in May, I think the more appropriate conversation is to compare him to Cal Ripken at this point, not Cal Ripken in 2001 or even in 1991, but Cal Ripken in 1983. Think about it. Cal Ripken was Rookie of the Year as a 22 year old in 1982. Well, Gunnar Henderson won Rookie of the Year at, at age 22, and, and now in his age 23, well, you know, turning 23 in late June. He's an MVP candidate, Cal Ripken, MVP in 1983. So I, I think it's difficult to even make the comparison. Eddie Murray would make an argument on that, by the way. You know, I Manny... just got to throw that out. <laughs> Cal was MVP that year. I, and look, I love Eddie Murray. Cal was MVP that year. Shortstop. Uh, I mean, we got to look at the – you got to look at the entire picture, and Cal was MVP. And I love, 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 love Eddie Murray. Eddie Murray – Absolutely was my guy, but Cal, that was the right call. There have been other examples of situations like that where I, I would say that, that media got it wrong, but uh, I think that was right. Point I'm trying to make, though, and I don't say this lightly, and you know me, I'm not Mr. Hot Take, I'm not Mr. Recency, caught in the you know prisoner of the moment, caught up in that, but I think for the the, the fact that you know even comparing him to Manny Machado, who as I've pointed out, needs to do it for a few more years, but is very much on track to have a Hall of Fame career uh, at this point in time. He's got to do it probably another four or five years at at least a fringe all-star kind of level. Uh, but that that's the kind of career Manny Machado's had. Say what you want about him, right? I mean, attitude or, you know, getting in, you know, some, some scuffles over the years, all that kind of stuff. He's been a great, great player. Uh, but when I think of what Manny Machado was at age 22 and 23, which was a, a great player, a phenom, Gunnar Henderson is better than what Manny Machado was at that point in time. Now, Manny Machado was a more spectacular defensive player, but Manny Machado never had a year where he was flirting with a, a, a thousand OPS, you know, for the Orioles. Never had a year where he was going to hit 50 home runs like Gunnar Anderson has a shot to do. Uh, never had a year where he was stealing a bunch of bases. I mean, Gunnar's a Gunner's a more athletic shortstop in terms of just faster. Uh, on the ba better base runner than Manny Machado uh, ever was, even in his prime. So I, I don't say that lightly, but that's what kind of talent we're talking about here. And it is that well, amazing. Well, Manny was because... 300 million. Davis was 150 million. The old man sat down with Davis and made that deal, right? Like giving that money oh, away totally, during that period yeah. of time, right? Like we're coming into that argument. And this is a week where that's going to be illuminated. And I think the impossibility of signing him here and now for – the baseball fan, the low information. I, I want to be. I want. I want to compare it to voters who don't know what the hell they're doing or talking about, and me taking phone calls for 30 years in, in this space and trying to explain to people how this works. Well, that's enough money for him, you know, like all of that. Like I, there's no chance of Gunnar Henderson signing, correct? Like on a Boris level, that has to be stated before the fans lose their mind on Steve Martin here, right? Well. You you mean like now? You mean uh, I mean, yeah, they can sign him when it, when it gets closer to free agency. Look, I don't want to say it's impossible. I, I think some of the Boris stuff. Let me rephrase that. I think a lot of the Boris stuff, yes, is true. But there have been some exceptions, like like Jose Altuve, for example, signed an extension with the, with the Astros. You know, he never hit the market. Um, that said, you're going to have to pay extraordinary money to do it you know you can do it this week but you know you're not getting gunner on oh you're gonna 
you know, you'll buy out two years of free agency and, you know, you'll give him a nice little bump. Well, do you believe he's going to be a great player when he's 27? If you do, yeah. if you believe that, yeah, no if you doubt believe about it. what you see is what you get, then you better look, this is when the, this is 32 years of me being on the radio. You better go, you, you know, it only gets more expensive. I mean, Lamar being, you know, point A, B and C that we took two years dancing with that. And in the end, he won. He 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 bent over Steve Bashotti and the and all of them with his sign but... with all he got every nickel he had coming to him he he did and he held out as he deserved and it, it. And, and, and you know what it. and that's going to be the case of Gunnar Henderson he's going to deserve it yeah I, I mean and, and that you know I, I don't want to rehash that because you and I spent three years talking about Lamar's contract the Ravens didn't lose that they paid market <laughs> I mean what you know. Losing that would have been them giving him a fully guaranteed Deshaun Watson deal. Anyway, going back to Gunner, I think it is so difficult to try to project what any player is going to be even in six or seven years, let alone the kind of contracts that we've seen the Bryce Harpers of the world sign. So Otani, it's, uh, I mean, even Otani's complicated, but, but you know, he didn't sign a 13 year deal. I mean, look at what the Phillies signed Bryce Harper to. I think it's so extraordinarily difficult to try to project that out. I think in most cases, I think the Phillies, when they signed that, figured probably the last three years of that deal, if not a little bit longer than that, you're going to be paying Bryce Harper. You're going to be paying the ghost of Bryce Harper more than what Bryce Harper is in his late 30s. Uh, and Br Bryce Harper's a great player, right? A uh, great player. But I think as it pertains to if you're going to invest – uh, 11, 12 year contract, whatever it is, uh, th that's ultimately going to sign Gunnar Henderson, whether it's the Orioles are doing it or team X signing him when he becomes a free agent, he is on the short list of guys that I would feel outstanding about. Maybe not outstanding is the right term. But it's relative, right? I would feel much more conviction and feel much more strongly that you're going to get great value for that deal. Even if the last couple of years of it, yeah, he's, you're going to be talking about someone that you're you're paying for what they already did. Uh, but I, I think the fact that he is only 23 years old, I think the fact that he runs so well, I think the fact that he shows the range that he has at shortstop, I think the fact that we've already seen him play third base at a high level as well. So even if you want to talk about six years from now, that his range is diminished a little bit at shortstop and – You've got some hot shot prospect at that point in time that's ready to play. You know, your next Joey Ortiz, let's say, uh, that, you know, that scenario, maybe Gunnar Henderson moves to third base. Well, then he can play third base for the duration of the contract, probably at a gold glove, at least above average level. The bat, uh, the fact that he can draw walks, you know, the fact that, yeah, he strikes out, but he doesn't strike out at like a Chris Davis level of striking out. Uh, you know, he's got swing and miss. Every, almost everyone does in today's game. We know that. Uh he checks every box that you would want in terms of if you're going to invest a, a 10 plus year contract in someone that I feel, put it this way, I'd much rather give him a 12 or 13 year contract today than I would give Adley Rutschman a seven or eight year contract as a catcher. And I say that with no knock on Adley Rutschman. It's more just how do most catcher's age for every Yachty Molina there are guys like Matt Wieters who you know they get to seven year seven year eight you know they, they, they're kind of run down as a catcher and then you're kind of lo looking at okay if the bat still plays are you putting them at another position so I, I just think Gunnar Henderson look anyone can get hurt right and even some of the most amazing talents on paper, most amazing talents early in their career don't always age to the point where they're going to have a 20-year Well, there's career, all sorts of right? things. Look at the Hamilton yeah. kid. Right? I mean, there's all kinds of things that can – well, I mean, that, uh, Josh Hamilton, I mean, obviously, yeah, drug problems and, and all that. So, you know, even putting aside extreme examples like that, you just never know. Uh, I mean, there's no such thing as a 100% safe investment. I mean, even people that – invest money just for a living financial advisors, you know, they'll set you up in lower risk investments, but to make money, ultimately you got to make, you, you're going to have to carry a little bit of risk. But I think the profile for Gunnar Henderson is just so 
safe in terms of the kind of player that you're going to get. And look, that doesn't mean Gunner's going to win seven MVPs over the next 15 years. You know, I'm not anointing him as the great, you know, the greatest player of the last 25 years. Let's pump the brakes on any, uh, any notions of that. But I mean, this kid is just so good already. And there's just, there's nothing about it that feels fluky. Uh, I mean, again, this wasn't a one, one, this wasn't a top five pick, even like Colton Kowser or Heston Kerstad. I mean, this was a second round guy. I mean, if, if Gunnar Henderson didn't exist, we'd be kind of looking at it, Adley Rutschman versus Bobby Witt, right? And Bobby Witt looks like he's going to be a generational, maybe when it's all said and done, other than George Brett might be the greatest player in Kansas City Royals history. Uh, and, you know, maybe maybe even becomes better than that uh, one day. Well, Gunnar Henderson that. might be the greatest player in Oriole history, right? Oh, and, but but, but that, that whole discussion of should you have taken Rutschman or Bobby Witt becomes a moot point when, with your next pick, you took Gunnar Henderson, who's an MVP candidate, and looking like well, he's going to be a Ray perennial Lewis, John Ogden. I mean, yeah, Ray's got no, the statue. John doesn't have one. But, but I'm glad you brought that up because you just think about where the Orioles were at that point in time and the fact that they had won one. And Adley Rutschman had been known in college baseball circles and, and MLB prospect circles for two years. That, that, that didn't sneak up on anyone. But by the time the Orioles were already a 115-loss outfit, in September of 2018, we didn't know who the general manager is, but if you ask someone who paid it, even semi paid attention to college baseball and the draft and, and minor leagues and all that, most people would have told you at that point in time, they're probably going to take the catcher from Oregon state, you know, with one, one, cause that's how well known that kid is already. So we knew that before Mike Elias was even hired that Adley Rutschman was going to be one, one. So you take him and that's panned out. And, and again, him and Bobby Witt, Pepsi or Coke, right? I, I mean, you know, I, Bobby Witt might end up becoming ultimately the better player, the better career. Probably will have more longevity as a shortstop compared to a catcher. But when you draft Gunnar Henderson on the heels of Adley Rutschman, then, well, now the debate is more so going to be Gunnar Henderson versus Bobby Witt for the next decade, right? I mean, that's what it feels like at this point in time. So, uh, I mean, it really is amazing to considering how low the Orioles were at that point, how terrible, how everything needed to be rebuilt. Uh, I mean, everything was just stripped down to the studs, right? I mean, they were at the foundation. The entire thing had been burnt down. Uh, and to come away with Rutschman and Gunnar Henderson right off the bat, it really is like Jonathan Ogden and Ray Lewis. And we'll see, to your point, ownership and business questions, Masson, uh, you know, what, what attendance is going to look like. All these different things are, are going to be part of that discussion. And, and let me be clear. I'm not. And what kind of owner this guy's going to be. Sure. And, and I'm not, I'm, that doesn't mean the Orioles get a free pass. Let's be very clear. Even if all those things aren't executed perfectly, there will be money to at least sign one of those guys if they want to do it. There are many, plenty of times where the question is whether the, whether the discussion is, should you do it? I'm telling you, Gunnar Henderson's about as safe of as an example as you're going to find that if you have the conviction, if, and again, there's always risk, but a 12-year contract, you know, the kind of deal that it's probably Gunnar's going to ultimately sign with someone, I feel so much better, so much better about giving that deal to him than just about any player in baseball. You know, it's a very short list of guys that I would tell you right now that I'd feel good and confident and feel so convinced. what is the number right now oh uh, i mean it's so it's it's impossible for me to even say at this point i i, I mean you look at what otani got no otani's a different example obviously and keep in mind the dodgers deferred a ton of that money too so you know it's not not a straight uh comparison but i mean you're talking about you know gunner's gonna get he's gonna get north of half a billion dollars uh, i mean that's what it's gonna be because Revenue is only going to grow from between now and when he hits the market in five years. Uh, and assuming he stays on, and that doesn't mean he's going to be the MVP or, or second in MVP every single year, but assuming he, he remains a perennial all-star, which it looks every bit like he's going to be that guy. I mean, he's going to be one of the highest paid players in, in baseball. Uh, I mean, he might be the highest paid player in baseball when he signs that deal in five years whoever it's with Orioles or the Yankees or the Dodgers or whoever it is, you know, whatever team. Uh, but uh, I mean, he's going to be, he, he's going to be a, a lucrative, lucrative, lucrative com financial commitment. 
But and this is a big week for him to turn on the sauce, just in a a general. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, for him. Yeah, in in the same way last last year, even though I don't think it, you know, it it didn't improve Adley Rutschman's stature as much as it just exposed him to the rest of the country at that point in time, right? I mean, I think anyone who paid attention knew that Adley was already an All Star catcher last year, but he was on that stage. And he does what he does in the home run derby. And, you know, for his flex, remember he went from hitting left-handed and then he flexes and starts hitting right-handed. I mean, I'm not nearly into the home run derby as much as I was when I was 15 years old, but that was a cool moment when Adley did that. I mean, that was really cool. So Gunner's going to be But I think Gunner Henderson could go to New York with me right now and stand in the middle of the Major League Baseball shop that's at the corner of 6th Avenue there that I've stood in. They always do these fun little games. Uh, I'm not sure anybody knows who, especially with the mustache now. Like, I, I'm not sure that he is a commodity yet. I think that changes next week, puts his face on television yeah. for everybody. Good. I think it's just different. I think it. I think it's different. And to your point, Rutschman was in people, and he's good looking, and he's got that. He's the catcher, takes the mask off. He's the leader. Like, he was. He was more likely to be recognized in the middle of New York in a baseball shop than Gunnar Henderson. And I think that Gunnar Henderson's life changes this week in that way for anonymity where he walks around Oakland on a road trip. And he's just a guy to becoming in baseball places. Everybody's going to know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that's fair. Although I'll also point out, I mean, he won, he won the fan vote over Bobby Witt pretty handedly. Uh, And Bobby Witt's been on the radar Again, same thing. And, and to your point, as far as the, the re- facial facial recognition, that's kind of a baseball problem in general, right? Um, you know, and baseball is a much more regional sport than the NFL or, or, or the NBA, right? It's, it's very much you follow the team in your market, and because they play every night, you only see the rest of the, the teams around baseball so much. But, but yeah, I, I think this is going to – this very much could be a coming out party for, for Gunnar Henderson this week. I mean – Puts on a good showing in the home run derby, hits a home run in the all-star game, you know, wins MVP of the all-star game, something along those lines. I mean, yeah. I mean, Rutschman, you know, maybe not the the most casual fans necessarily knew who he was a year ago at this time, but anyone who kind of sort of paid attention enough, they knew that they at least knew, hey, the Orioles have a really good catcher. He's their top prospect coming through. The Orioles are going to be good in a couple years. There was that. But I mean, for, for Gunnar Henderson to do what he's done. I mean, I even think back to think back to four years ago, pandemic year, Orioles had the alternate training site in Bowie. And, you know, at that point, you know, Gunnar had gotten his feet wet a little bit, but there was no minor league season that year, but it was that fall when they had their instructional league. And I remember vividly hearing at that point in time that the two guys that had really turned some heads, despite being pretty young, two guys, one was Jordan Westberg, who was a college player, had been drafted. He impressed and turned heads that fall of 2020. But the other one who really popped up where they said, oh, my gosh, this guy has a chance to not just be a major league player, but has a chance to be a really, really good major league player it was Gunnar Henderson. So his development, his rise from where he was, and I remember vividly two years ago, Mike Elias set, called him the flagship player for their development. You know, Adley Rutschman, there wasn't a whole lot of developing the Orioles did. Adley Rutschman probably could have gone, I don't know, right to the majors, but he certainly could have been in the majors the year after he was drafted. If we're calling a spade a spade and the Orioles were ready to contend at that point, whatever. In the case of Gunnar Henderson, there was some development that needed to be done. You know, I I saw recently a, a video got leaked out of what his high school swing looked like. Uh, you know, that, that that was making the rounds on social media. It was not the fluid swing that you see today. You know, it wasn't the, 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 the amazing swing that you see today. So the Orioles did a lot of work with him, taking nothing away from Gunner. Growth mindset, wanted to be great, works hard. All the qualities that Sig Dell talked about. And has Astro five Ball, tools. Right? And has All the tools. That. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But But they cultivated that. They helped nurture that. They developed that. And what you have now is this guy's a monster. I mean, he's a monster. Uh, and the fact that he's 23 years old, and that's why I said he's better than what Manny Machado was at that point. Manny was a heck of an amazing 23-year-old. That's why I said I don't say this lightly. And look, 
to sit here and, and try to say that Gunnar Henderson's going to go to the Hall of Fame or play 20 years, no one has any clue. But comparing him to what Cal Ripken was as a 22 and 23 year old player, that's what we're talking about here. Not it's not the same profile exactly. Like I said, runs more, has more raw power than Cal, but uh, I mean that that's scary territory. I mean Gunnar's been you know to this point he's been about a six and a half win player in terms of wins above replacement. He's got a chance to be a 10 or 11 win player when it's all said and done. There's one guy in the history of the franchise that's done that. He did it twice. Cal Ripken Jr. So that's the kind of guy we're talking about here. Long, long, long way to go before Gunner's being mentioned in the same conversation in terms of a career, but in terms of a comp for his age, I mean, it's not, it's not far fetched. That's how talented, how uber talented he really is, and uh, he's he's an absolute joy to watch. And the rest of the country is going to get to see that this coming week uh, down in Arlington. He is Luke Jones. He is Baltimore Luke. He will be at Camden Yards this week. Uh, Chicago Cubs are coming in. I uh, hope they bring some pizza with them. Uh, this weekend, the Yankees will be here. I will bring the crab cakes. Luke and I will be down at Fadley's. I'm wearing my my uh, J.W. Fadley's established 1887. We were established back in 1991. Uh, we're going to be establishing some winners. Gold Rush 7's doublers from the Maryland Lottery. We'll have these on Friday between 2 and 5. Probably going to be there a little early on Friday. Yankees fans running around. Come on down. Our friends from Jiffy Lube, as well as Liberty Pure Solutions, putting us out on the road. We have so many awesome things happening happening here uh new websites up it's been okay on mobile a little wonky on the uh on the desktop this weekend we're getting that organized as well but uh luke will be back to writing this week and uh, a couple weeks out on football you haven't thought football for a minute have you luke you haven't just you haven't given it one second of thought this last two weeks right other than mark schlereth oh I've, I've i've thought of it because it, it it happens quicker i mean their first day first full squad workout is the day after i return from vacation which i wasn't necessarily expecting when i booked it back in in january so when is the first full uh, day? it's right july around the corner Ju- july 21st so it's a little bit earlier keep in mind they play the the season opening game you know that thursday what september 5th i think it is off the top of my head so you know it's it's right around the corner uh, but in the meantime I think the Orioles are uh, commanding everyone's, demanding everyone's attention for the time being. And that's okay. You know, we want we'll, we'll plenty of time the to talk about. Filling the summer void, right? Exactly, right? Yeah. We'll have plenty of time to talk about what's going on in the backfields in Owings Mills uh, just a couple weeks away. I'm going to celebrate All-Star Week here by having my first gold watermelon at uh, Wise Market. So I haven't had any, I haven't had any watermelon at all, but I need some gold watermelon here this week. Uh, we got peach cake back. I mean, it's summertime. Crab cakes are better than ever and nice and fresh. We down to Fadley's on Friday. Come say hello to us. Uh, we're going to be talking All-Star Game. We're going to be talking Yankees all week. Um, and certainly going to be talking trading deadline and pitching. Can't believe Luke and I have talked two hours Orioles baseball, and we haven't mentioned all that pressure on Mike Elias to help the bullpen and the rotation. We shall do that. I am Nestor. He is Luke. We are WNST AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. And we never stop talking Baltimore positive.